at our destination. It is here that the Grand Inquisitor resides. As a Castilian Hidalgo of 95 quarterings, I regret that I am unable to pay my state visit on a horse. As a Castilian Hidalgo of that description, I should have preferred to ride through the streets of Venice, but owing, I presume, to an unusually wet season, the streets are in such a condition that equestrian exercise is impracticable. <coughs> No matter. Where is our suite? Your Grace, I'm here. Ah. Why do you not do yourself the honor to kneel when you address his grace? My love, it is so small a matter. <coughs> Still, you may as well do it. The young man seems to entertain but an imperfect appreciation of the respect due from a menial to a Castilian Hidalgo. Oh, my child, you are hard upon our suite. He does not appreciate that position, and can be whispered to he does. <clears throat> well, let us hope the omission was not intended as a slight. I should be much hurt if I thought it was. <clears throat> so would he. <clears throat> Where are the halberdiers who were to have had the honor of meeting us here, that our visit to the Grand Inquisitor might be made in <clears throat> becoming state? Your Grace, the halberdiers are mercenary people who stipulated for a trifle on account. <clears throat> How tiresome. Well, let us hope the Grand Inquisitor is a blind gentleman. <laughs> and the band, who were to have had the honor of escorting us. I see no band. Your Grace, the band assorted persons who required to be paid in advance. Yes, so like a band. <laughs> Insuperable difficulties meet me at every turn. But surely they know his grace. Exactly, they know his grace. <laughs> well, <clears throat> Let us hope the Grand Inquisitor is a deaf gentleman. A cornet, a pistol would be something. You do not happen to possess the accomplishment of tootling like a cornet, a pistol? Alas, no, Your Grace. Uh, but I can imitate a farmyard. Well, I don't see how that would help us. I don't see how we could bring it in. It would not help us in the least. We are not a part of the graziers come to market. Don't? My love, our sweet feelings. Be so good as to ring the bell and inform the Grand Inquisitor that His Grace, the Duke of Pazatoro, Count Matadoro, Baron Picadoro. Oh, and sweet goodness. Oh, and sweet. Have arrived in Venice and seek. Desire. Demand. And demand an audience. Your Grace has but to command. I felt sure of it. I felt sure of it. And now, my love, shall we tell her? Oh, I think so. And now, my love, prepare for a magnificent surprise. It is my agreeable duty to reveal to you a secret which should make you the happiest young lady in Venice. A secret? Mm -hmm. A secret? Which, for state reasons, it has been necessary to preserve for 20 years. When you were a prattling babe of six months old, you were married. Uh, by proxy, to no less a personage than the infant son and heir of his majesty, the immeasurably wealthy king of Barataria. Married to the infant son of the king of Barataria? Mm. Was I consulted? No. But it was a most unpardonable liberty. Uh, uh, consider his extreme youth 
And forgive me. Shortly after the ceremony, that misguided monarch abandoned the creed of his forefathers and became a Wesleyan Methodist <laughs> of the most bigoted and persecuting type. The Grand Inquisitor, determined that, that the innovation should not be perpetuated in Barataria, caused your smiling and unconscious husband to be stolen and conveyed to Venice. A fortnight since, that Methodist monarch and all his Wesleyan court were killed in an insurrection. And we are here to ascertain the whereabouts of your husband and to hail you, our daughter, as Her Majesty, the reigning queen of Barataria. Your Majesty! Necessary it is to travel with a full band. I, the Queen of Barataria, yet I've nothing to wear. We are practically penniless. Well, that point has not escaped me, although I am unhappily in straitened circumstances at present. My social influence is something enormous, and a company to be called the Duke of Plaza Toro Limited is in course of formation to work. An influential director has been secured, and I shall myself join the board after allotment. Am I to understand that the Queen of Barataria may be called upon at any time to witness her honest sire in process of liquidation? <coughs> uh, the speculation is not exempt from that drawback. If your father should stop, it will, of course, be necessary to wind him up. But it's so undignified. It's so degrading. A grandee of Spain turned into a public company. Such a thing was never heard of. Now, my child, the Duke of Plaza Toro does not follow fashions. He leads them. He always leads everybody. When he was in the army, he led his regiment. He occasionally led them into action. He invariably led them out of it. <laughs> Enterprise of martial kind when there was any fighting. He led his regiment from behind. He found it less exciting. But when away his regiment ran, his place was that the full earth that celebrated, cultivated, underrated nobleman, the Duke of Plaza Toro. In the first place for the right, uh -huh. he always was that right, uh -huh. and celebrated, 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 the Duke of Plaza Toro. Invade destructions and to hide they all proceeded. No soldier in that gallant band who harbors well as he did. He lay concealed throughout the war and to preserve his gore. That unaffected, undetected, well connected warrior, the Duke of Lava Dora. In every world he did, he always took the lead. That unaffected, undetected, well connected warrior, the Duke of Lava Dora. When told that they would all be shot unless they left the furthest, that hero hesitated not to marvel at the service. He sent his resignation in the first of all his Torah, that very knowing, overflowing, easygoing paladin, the Duke of Plaza Toro. To men of first the clay, ha ha, he always took the way, ha ha, and a very knowing, overflowing, easygoing paladin, the Duke of Plaza Toro. That very knowing, overflowing, easygoing paladin, the Duke of Plaza Toro.
trust you'll ever have reason to repent. Nay, no, as it may not be. I have embraced you for the last time. Jacinda. I have just learned to my surprise and indignation that I was wedded baby was to the infant son of the king of Barataria. The son of the king of Barataria? The child who was stolen in infancy by the Inquisition? The same, but of course you know his story. Know his story? Why, I have often told you that my mother was the nurse to whose charge he was entrusted. True, I had forgotten. Well, he has been discovered, and my father has brought me here to claim his hand. But you will not recognize this marriage. It took place when you were too young to understand its import. Nay, Louis, respect my principles, and cease to torture me with vain entreaties. Henceforth, my life is another's. But stay. The present and the future, they are another's. But the past, that at least is ours, and none can take it from us. As we may revel in naught else, let us revel in that. I don't think I grasp your meaning. Yet it is logical enough. You say you cease to love me. I say I may not love you. But you do not say you did not love me. I loved you with a frenzy that words are powerless to express, and that but ten brief minutes since. Exactly, my own. That is, until ten minutes since, my own. My lately loved, my recently adored. Tell me that until, say, quarter of an hour ago, I was all in all to thee. I see your idea. It's ingenious. But don't do that. There can be no harm in reveling in that past. None whatever. But an embrace cannot be taken to act retrospectively. Perhaps not. Ah, Casilda, you are to me as the sun is to the earth. And now our love, so full of life, is but a silent, solemn memory. Must it be so, Casilda? Louise, it must be so. <laughs>
My child, allow me to present to you his distinction, Don Alhambra del Valero, the Grand Inquisitor of Spain. <clears throat> it was his distinction who so thoughtfully abstracted your infant husband and brought him to Venice. So this is the little lady who is so unexpectedly called upon to assume the functions of royalty. And a very nice little lady, too. Jim, isn't she? Uh, distinctly, Jim. Mm. Uh, allow me. Oh, naughty temper. You must make some allowance. Uh, her Majesty's head is a little turned by her access of dignity. I could have wished that Her Majesty's access of dignity had turned it in this direction. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, if I am not mistaken, there appears to be some little doubt as to His Majesty's uh, whereabouts. A doubt as to his whereabouts? Then we may yet be safe. Uh, a doubt? Oh, dear, no. No doubt at all. He is here in Venice, buying the modest but picturesque calling of a gondolier. I can give you his address. I see him every day in the entire annals of our history. There's absolutely no circumstance so entirely free from all manner of doubt of any kind whatever. Uh, listen. I stole the prince and I brought him here and left him gaily prattling with a highly respectable gondolier who promised a royal babe to rear and teach him the trade of a time on near with his own beloved Bradley. Also the babe was strong and stout and considering all things clever. Of that there is no manner of doubt, no probable possible shadow of doubt, no possible doubt whatever. No possible doubt whatever. I must dispose to fear with terrible taste for tippling. That highly respectable gondolier could never declare with a mind sincere which of the two is his offspring dear and which the royal stripling. Which was which he could never make out despite his best endeavor. Of that there is no manner of doubt, no probable possible shadow of doubt, no possible doubt whatever. No possible doubt whatever. Bed. And when at the end of the year I saw that infant tent, that highly respectable gondolier was lying a corpse in his humble beer, I dropped a grand inquisitor's tear. <laughs> that gondolier had perished, a taste for drink combined with gout had doubled him up forever. Of that there is no manner of doubt, no probable possible shadow of doubt, no possible doubt whatever. No possible doubt whatever. The children followed his old career. This statement can't be carried. Of a highly respectable gondolier. Well, one of the two who will soon be here. But which of the two it is not quite clear. It's a royal prince you marry. Search in and out and round about. And you'll discover never a tale so free from every doubt. Or probable possible shadow of doubt. Or possible doubt whatever. A tale so free. Without any doubt of any kind, whatever. Uh, but be reassured, the nurse to whom your husband was entrusted is the mother of that musical young man who is such a past master of that delicately modulated instrument. She can, no doubt, establish the king's identity beyond all question. And how did he know that? My young friend. A grand inquisitor is always up to date. His mother is at present the wife of a highly respectable and old established brigand who carries on an extensive practice in the mountains around Cordoba. Accompanied by two of my emissaries, he will set off at once for his mother's address. She will return with them, and if she finds any difficulty in making up her mind, the persuasive influence of the torture chamber will jog her memory. <laughs> <laughs> 